eternal, righteous, and invisible Father in heaven. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the privilege to be among the living today. And we are also grateful, Father, for giving us the opportunity to partake of your word and to fellowship with you now. Lord, your word is more than life itself. And we believe that by your grace, your word shall come into our lives and transform us to be in the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, dear Lord, we pray that you grant to us the gift of your Holy Spirit, that by your Spirit we may come into a greater nearness to you and that we may rightly divide the word of truth. Grant to me the grace, Lord, to speak words that will bless your children who are listening. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and thank you for answering my prayers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. August 20 The Rechabites And Jeremiah said unto the house of the Rechabites, Because ye have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab your father, and kept all his precepts, therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab, the son of Rechab, shall not want a man to stand before me for ever. Jeremiah chapter 35 verse 18 and 19 God commanded Jeremiah to gather the Rechabites into the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers and set wine before them and invite them to drink. Jeremiah did as the Lord commanded him. But they said, We will drink no wine, for Jonadab the son of Rechab our father commanded us, saying, Ye shall drink no wine, neither ye nor your sons, for ever. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Go and tell the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Will ye not receive instruction to hearken to my words, saith the Lord? The words of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, that he commanded his sons not to drink wine are performed for unto this day they drink none but obey their father's commandment here god contrasts the obedience of the rechabites with the disobedience and rebellion of his people who will not receive his words of reproof and warning the Rechabites were commended for their ready and willing obedience, while God's people refused to be reproved by their prophets. If the requirements of a good and wise father, who took the best and most effectual means to secure his posterity against the evils of intemperance, were worthy of strict obedience, surely God's authority should be held in as much greater reverence as he is holier than man. Our Creator and our Commander, infinite in power, terrible in judgment, seeks by every means to bring men to see and repent of their sins. By the mouth of his prophets, he predicts the dangers of disobedience. He sounds the note of warning and faithfully reproves sin. His people are kept in prosperity only by his mercy, through the vigilant watch care of chosen instrumentalities. He cannot uphold and guard the people who reject his counsel and despise his reproofs. For a time he may withhold his retributive judgments, yet he cannot always stay his hand. Amen.
The title of our devotion for today is The Rechabites. Who are these people called the Rechabites? And we hear that they are people who were who received instruction from a certain Junadab, the son of Rechab. And instruction received from Junadab was that they should not take any wine or build houses or own lands. Who is Jonadab? There is a man called Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, in the book of Second Kings chapter 10. During the days when Ahab had made Israel to depart from God, God raised up Jehu to destroy the house of Ahab. Of course, this was after Ahab himself had died, but Jezebel was there still practicing her witchcraft and leading people into idolatry and fornication. And God raised up a man called Jehu to destroy the house of Ahab. While he was in this business, he had killed the son of Ahab, which was Joram, and also Ahaziah, the son of Hezekiah, who married Athaliah, the daughter of Jezebel. These two men were slain by Jehu. But Jehu was commissioned by God to do not more than that, to also slay Jezebel, which he oversaw that, and then to slay the children of Ahab, 70 sons of Ahab, which he did. But then he wanted to do more. The Lord asked him to do it actually. And while he was on his way to do this, he met a certain man in the book of Second Kings. You see, Jehu was on a killing spree. The Lord asked him to do that. He was cleansing the house of, of, uh, or the, the house of Israel of the influence of Jezebel. Now, he met certain men who were also in support of Ahab's sin, which were children or will I say relatives of Ahaziah who had married Jezebel's daughter and he when he met them on the way in the book of 2nd Kings chapter 10 it says from verse 12 and he arose and departed and came to Samaria and as he was at the sharing house on the way Jehu met with the brethren of Ahaziah king of Judah now take note this is not king of Israel but king of Judah and said who are you and they answered, We are the brethren of Ahaziah, and we go down to salute the children of the king and the children of the queen. Who were they going to salute? They were going to salute Jezebel and her children, and also Ahab's children. They were in this kind of league with Jezebel, people who were from Judah. Now, what did Ahab do? What did Jehu do? Verse 14 says, And he said, Take them alive. And they took them alive and slew them at the pit of the sharing house. Even two and forty men, neither left he any of them. Now he met someone else. Verse 15 it says, And when he was departed thence, he lighted on Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, coming to meet him. And he saluted him and said to him, Is thine heart right as my heart is with thy heart? And Jehonadab answered, it is if it be give me thine hand and he gave him his hand and he that's Jehu took Jonadab the son of Rechab up to him in the chariot and he Jehu said to Jonadab come with me and see my zeal for the Lord so they made him ride in his chariot I'll stop there this is the only place that Jonadab son of Rechab is mentioned but we can see that this certain man, Jonadab, the son of Rechab, was a faithful child of God who was living in harmony with the word of God during the days of apostasy both in Judah and in Israel. After the death of Jehoshaphat, that great king, Jehoshaphat had one mistake in his life. It was not a small one. He made, a, he made friendship with Ahab and his son, Ahaziah married the daughter of Jezebel. This brought about the witchcraft transcending from Israel down to Judah and Jehu was the one who destroyed them. In this time, there was a man called Jonadab, the son of Rechab, who was faithful to do the will of God. This man was like sort of an Abraham who continued to follow the Lord in the midst of that apostasy. And you can tell that this man lived during the days of Elijah. And during that time, when there was that three and a half years of no rain, Jehonadab was there and he was a follower of God. During the days when Elisha was a prophet, Jonadab was there, the son of Rechab. He was a faithful child of God 
who gives strict instruction to his children. And it's not just his own children, but the Rechabites, which includes his brothers. Because he, Jonadab, is the son of Rechab. So the Rechabites is not just Jonadab's children, but other people too. And they received instruction from this man of God, Jonadab, to not just avoid taking alcohol, but also live like Abraham. Don't even buy any land or just live in tents. Don't build houses. And it was an instruction given to them so that they can easily follow the laws of God. Now, during this time, many years later, of great apostasy in Judah, after the call of Jeremiah, Jeremiah had been doing his work for a long time. This was during the days of Jehoiakim, the, the king after Josiah. God wanted to contrast the disobedience of Israel with the obedience of the Rechabites. And he sent this man, the prophet Jeremiah, to call the Rechabites to take wine. And not just to give them wine anywhere, but in a secret place where no one is watching, just between them and Jeremiah. And God wanted to teach a lesson. When Jeremiah had called them, in the book of Jeremiah 35, it says in verse 5, And I set before the sons of the house of the Rechabites pots, full of wine and cups, and I said unto them, Drink you wine. But they said, We will drink no wine, for Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, Ye shall drink no wine, neither ye nor your sons forever. Neither shall ye build house, nor sow seed, nor plant vineyard, nor have any. But all your days ye you shall dwell in tents, that you may live many days in the land where you be strangers. Thus have we obeyed the voice of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, in all that he had charged us, to drink no wine all our days, we, our wives, our sons, nor our daughters, nor to build houses for us to dwell in. Neither have we vineyard, nor field, nor seed. But we have dwelt in tents, and have obeyed, and done according to all that Jonadab our father commanded us. But it came to pass, when Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came up into the land, that we said, Come, let us go to Jerusalem for fear of the army of the Chaldeans, and for fear of the army of the Syrians. So we dwell at Jerusalem. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Go and tell the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Will you not receive instruction to hearken to my words, saith the Lord? The words of Jonadab the son of Rechab, that he commanded his sons not to drink wine, are performed. For unto this day they drink none, but obey their father's commandment. Notwithstanding, I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye hearken not unto me. I have sent also unto you all my servants the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Return ye now every man from his evil way, and amend your doings, and go not after other gods to serve them. And you shall dwell in the land which I have given to you and to your fathers, but you have not inclined your ear, nor hearkened unto me. Hmm. I'll stop here for a while. Let us analyze the instruction given by Jonadab to his children. These are the Rechabites now. It is not just that they shouldn't drink wine. Did you hear that? That they shouldn't even build houses. They shouldn't own any vineyard, any field, not even a seed. What kind of life were these people living? And yet they obeyed such extreme instruction. Brothers and sisters, what does this remind you of? Has the Lord given us instructions today that are reasonable, yet they sound extreme to you? Like how we, as males and females, should dress, and what day we should keep holy, and also the kind of diet we should have just like the Rechabites were given. And yet the ones that the Lord gives to us are reasonable, they are fine. It's not that the ones that Jonadab gave to the children were not reasonable, they were reasonable, but you can say that they were extreme. We are not required like the Rechabites not to have seed, not to have land, not to build a house, not to even be farmers. The Lord said you can be farmers, own seed. But the Rechabites were told not to even as much as own a seed, not to talk of having a vineyard or a field where they are planting and not to drink wine. Now, today the Lord is pointing to these Rechabites 
and asking us the same question. Will you not listen to me? What instruction have I given you that you say is extreme, but yet people with two hands, two legs, a brain and a mind like yourself, with less conveniences in their own time than in ours, were able to obey what their father told them? The contrast between our own disobedience today and the obedience to extreme instructions of the Rechabites stands as a judgment against us. But do we not have people who are like Rechabites today, obeying extreme instructions? Yes, we do. Yes, we do have them. Today, there are many who follow laws not like that of the Rechabites, which were actually good, but they are extreme to a negative point. Jonadab told his children not to taste alcohol. This was a healthful principle which they adhered to continually and the Lord took note of it. But he went further. He told them not to even own a land. Abraham lived that kind of life. Not that he didn't own land, but he didn't build houses. He was a pilgrim moving from place to place, dwelling in tents. And this is the kind of life the Rechabites were living, dwelling in tents, owning no land. Abraham was able to have a vineyard. He planted. He owned seed. The Rechabites went further. They took it to another level. They did not even own seed. They did not own a land or a vineyard. You call that extreme. And I'll say yes, but it's not a sin nevertheless. It's what their father told them and they did it. As far as they were not imposing it on others and saying that for you to own seed is a sin. There was nothing wrong with the Rechabites was doing it as a personal principle given and handed over to them by their father whom they loved, they trusted and they respected him and out of the trust they had for Jonadab their father, they, they followed his instruction believing that whatever Jonadab told them was for their own good and it was a wise instruction that will help them to obey God and to keep themselves from evil and they did it. You see. What Jonadab said was good. The Lord also looks at the heathen and the pagan worlds today who follow instructions and tenets of their faith ardently. They don't turn to the right or to the left because they honor and respect their leader and their God. The faithfulness of the heathen today is a rebuke to the apostasy of the modern day Christians. The Muslims, for example, pray more than five times a day. I hear them and many of them follow hard after their faith. They don't eat pork, for example. They never make pictures of their God. They also do not adopt practices from other religions, but will always follow what they have been told to do. They don't permit anything and everything to just come between themselves and their God. How about the Hindus and the Buddhists? For many years, they have been following their own practices handed down to them from their fathers. This they have done for many years even if it doesn't profit them. But how about God's people? We forsake him for things that does not profit. And in the state of this apostasy, God's people will still say, so-called God's people, Christians, will still say, oh, we have not sinned. If you try to convince them of their sins, they will say, oh, they've not done anything wrong. The story of the Rechabites and also the life of certain people who live among us today following instructions that one may call extreme is a rebuke to the Christian world, especially among those who say that they are the true church of God, that they are the ones whom the Lord has chosen. They, and there are many who claim to be that. I'm not even referring to any specific denomination, but many church, many Christian denominations convince themselves, oh, we are God's people. We are God's church. And some will say, oh, we are the ones who keep the commandments of God. We are the ones who rightly divide the word of truth. Do you rightly divide, divide the word of truth? Are you sure that the Lord is not looking at you the way he looked at Judah and saying to you, will you not listen to me? Extreme instructions, you say, is dress reform, health reform, Sabbath reform. When the Lord says keep the Sabbath holy, when he says there should be a distinction between the dress of the man and the woman, common head covering for the ladies. Written clearly in the book of 1 Corinthians 11, people rise and revolt at it. What if you were a Rechabite that was told not to build houses, not to own a seed, not to even have a vineyard or a field? What would you do then? You will certainly rationalize it and say, oh, that was an instruction from Junalab. It was given because, like they say for the one of head covering, oh, it was given because the women, no evidence in the Bible, no extra biblical evidence also. They will say, oh, the Corinthian women were wicked and they were unruly. That's why they were told to cover their hair. It's not an instruction for us today, really. Who are you deceiving? 
check your Bible, 1 Corinthians 11, nothing like that. Or is it the one on dress reform or the law of God? Some people say the law of God is not binding on us today, that it has been done away with, that we are not supposed to follow it simply because they don't want to keep the Sabbath. That's just the reason. But when you tell them, are you saying we shouldn't kill? They say, no, of course, killing is wrong, stealing is wrong. Then why do you say the Sabbath has been done away with if you agree that the other nine commandments still stand? Is it not because you don't want to follow something that you think will come between you and your ambitions? Something that will set you like a recabite to be a sore thumb that will make you look odd among the people. The recabites were odd. The recabites were different. They were singular. They were not like every other person around them. They were different. And if we follow God today in a world that is apostatizing like that of the children of Judah, we also will look different like the recabites. But the recabites were not ashamed to follow the instruction of Jonadab their father even though they looked different even though they were separated even when Jeremiah took them in secret to test them and gave them alcohol and said drink in secret they did not still do what Jeremiah wanted them to do why the reason behind this is the matter of love and trust the reason why many of us rationalize the word of God and say, oh, this thing was ancient, an ancient instruction that is not binding on us today and even go as far as throwing away the law of God altogether. And I've mentioned other things. The law of God, just throw it away completely. The reason why people do that is, like we, is because we are like the children of Judah. We have apostatized. We have turned away from God and we are not like the Rechabites. The instruction given by the Rechabites. Do you see how far the man Jonadab lived? He lived during the days of Jehu, in the days of Ahab, the days of Jehoshaphat. That was when Jonadab lived. Now we are at the tail end of the kingdom of Judah. This is many, many years later. Nothing less than 200 years later. And yet, that's just an estimate I give. And yet, they were still following the instruction of their fathers. When did we get instructions from the spirit of prophecy telling us what to do in diet and dress? It's just a few years ago. Yet, many, even before now, many years ago, we have already apostatized from the instruction of the spirit of prophecy. This is not Jonadab here. We are talking of spirit of prophecy. If the Rechabites were able to follow Jonadab's instruction and the Lord spoke through his word in the Bible and through the spirit of prophecy telling us this is what your diet should be. This is what your dress should be. This is how you should keep the Sabbath. This is how you should conduct yourself in keeping the commandments of God. And many of us say, oh, that is for that time. We are living in the 21st century. Don't you know that that's the exact same thing these children of Judah would have been, would have been saying? Oh, these laws that Jeremiah is telling us is not for our time. It is for the people of the past. Things have changed. Can't you see that we have new kinds of weapons? Do you remember King Uzzah? King Uzzah manufactured weaponry that was never done before him. He advanced this technol the technology of warfare by using mechanical weapons that people didn't have before. Things like trebuchets. He, he manufactured them. He was the one, that King Uzzah. So don't think that it's only in our time that inventions have been made. Even in the time of these children of Judah, during the days of Uzzah, there was industrial revolution also. And as usual, whenever there is industrial revolution, where is it put into? It is put into the military. And that was what Uzzah did. That's King, King Uzzah. He put his own um, investments of in, inventions into the military. So it's no, it's no new thing. There's nothing new under the, under the sun. It could have been that these children of Judah would also be thinking, man, during the days of Moses, did, did all these things exist? Were they not just fighting with swords and, and rakes and other sharing, sharing instruments and just using horses and chariots? Look at what we have today. Times have changed. You cannot say we should be following those same old ancient instructions. But what does the Lord have to say to us when we think this way? Verse 14 of Jeremiah 35. God says, the words of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, that he commanded his sons not to drink wine are performed for unto this day they drink none, but obey their father's commandments, notwithstanding I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but you hearken not unto me. I have sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Return ye now every man from his evil way. 
and amend your doings and go not after other gods to serve them and you shall dwell in the land which i have given to you and to your fathers but you have not inclined your ear nor hearkened unto me because the sons of jonadab the sons of rechab have performed the commandment of their father which he commanded them but these people hath not hearkened unto me therefore thus saith the lord god of hosts the god of israel behold i will bring upon judah and upon all the inhabitants of jerusalem all that evil all the evil that i have pronounced against them because i have spoken unto them but they have not heard and i have called unto them but they have not answered and jeremiah said unto the house of the rechabites thus saith the lord of hosts the god of israel because you have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab your father, and keep all his precepts, and done according unto all that he had commanded you. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab the son of Rechab, shall not want a man to stand before me for ever. Amen. As I'm going through this, I'm remembering the instruction of health reform handed down to the people, Seventh-day Adventists, given to them by the inspiration of the spirit of prophecy through Ellen White. Today, people in the world are following this instruction of what it means to live a life that is healthy, avoiding the animal-based diet, subsisting on a plant-based diet, also adhering to a proper lifestyle of taking adequate amount of water and also living in a way that you walk and rest like you should, taking sunlight and exercise. People in the world have received instructions not from God now, from mere men, and they follow these things strictly. Yet God has spoken to the Seventh-day Adventists, and yet they would rationalize and they would not listen. Do you not know that what I'm reading here right now is the same thing the Lord will say to us? He will point us to the world and say, the instruction given to them by their worldly men and scientists, they are following it strictly. Yet I have told my people, the same instruction and even better ones and they would not listen don't you know that the judgment of god will also come upon us for it it will certainly come for the lord spoke and we will not listen but men are speaking and people are listening this is what we read in the devotion Conflict and Courage, page 238, paragraph 4 says, If the requirements of a good and wise father, who took the best and most effectual means to secure his posterity against the evils of intemperance, were worthy of strict obedience, surely God's authority should be held in as much greater reverence as he is holier than man, our creator and our commander, infinite in power, terrible in judgment, seeks by every means to bring man to see and repent of their sins by the mouth of his servants he predicts the dangers of disobedience he sounds the note of warning and faithfully reproves sin his people are kept in prosperity only by his mercy through the vigilant watch care of chosen instrumentalities he cannot uphold and guard a people who reject his counsel and despise his reproofs for a time he may withhold his retributive judgments yet he cannot always stay his hand." End of quote. For a time, God does withhold re his judgments from us, but it will not always be like that. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Some people say, God has changed today, has he? Are you not seeing the judgments of God in the land in form of the wars and the rumors of wars going on and the sicknesses all over? It's still the same thing. When we do not obey God, that is the consequence of it especially when he has given us direct instructions on how to avoid avoid sickness illness and live a life that will give us good health and yet we disregard his instructions what do you think will happen we will face his judgments the children of jonadab the son of rechab are an example to us of what we should do but there was much more that the lord wanted to say to the children of judah and there's much more he wants to say to us today some of the things that they were doing that God had instructed them in the days of Jeremiah, I just want to point out a few of them that, that can relate to us today that God wants us to take note of. God had initially spoken through Jeremiah telling them some of their problems of conformity to the world that he wanted to be addressed. In the book of Jeremiah 7 verse 18 and 19, he said, The children gather wood 
and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger? saith the Lord. Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? What is this that the children of Judah were doing, baking cakes to the queen of heaven? I want us to break it down to understand. You see, this phrase, the queen of heaven, as it appears here, refers to nothing more than the idolatry practice in Israel, but a special one because God singled it out, baking cakes to the queen of heaven. Who is this queen of heaven that is written here in the book of Jeremiah 7 verse 18? This title, the queen of heaven, refers to Ishtar an Assyrian and Babylonian goddess, also known as Ashtoreth or Astart, which I've talked about in other devotions. In, in other, other groups, they call them Ashtoreth, Ashtart, or Ishtar, like I said. She was thought to be the wife of Baal, also known as Molech. Baal, the same god as Molech. And the motivation of women, because it was mostly women who were baking these cakes to the Queen of Heaven, the, their motivation to worship Ashtoreth, it came from her reputation as the fertility goddess and one who gave them the ability to give birth to many children so that's why many women were the ones who were baking cakes to the queen of heaven strictly like i said women if you go to the book of jeremiah 44 you find out that the women were the ones doing this kind of worship baking cakes to the queen of heaven because they believed that she was the one that will give them the fertility that they wanted and it was rampant among pagans but sadly it became popular among the Israelites. But not just the Israelites. If you go to Wikipedia and just check Queen of Heaven, what is Queen of Heaven? It says in Wikipedia, it is a title given to Virgin Mary, which is not actually Mary, the mother of Jesus, but they just like to, they've adopted her name. But it is still the same Ishtar. So I'm reading from Wikipedia. It says it's a title given to Virgin Mary by Christians, mainly of the Catholic Church and to a lesser extent in Anglicanism and Lutheranism and Eastern Orthodoxy. The Catholic teaching on this subject is expressed in the papal encyclical Ad Seeli Reginam, issued by Pope Pius XII in 1954. It states that Mary is called the Queen of Heaven because her son, Jesus Christ, is the King of Israel and the heavenly King of the universe. Indeed, the Davidic tradition of Israel recognized the mother of the King as the Queen Mother of Israel. The title Queen of Heaven has long been a Catholic tradition included in prayers and devotional literature and seen in Western art in the subject of the coronation of the Virgin Mary from the High Middle Ages, long before it was given a formal definition status by the Church. So do you see that? Queen of Heaven has been used long ago even before Mary was born, although what they are referring to here is Middle Ages. But this Queen of Heaven, like we see in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 18 and 19, is there before even Mary was born. So who is the Queen of Heaven that is being worshipped? It is still the same Isha. It is not Mary. This was one of the problems of the children of Israel. They had adopted beliefs that were totally away from the truth. I don't know where the idea that Ashtoreth was a consort of, of, of God originated, but it's easy to see how the blending of paganism that exalts a goddess with the worship of the King of Heaven can lead to the combining of God with Mary, which is actually Ashtoreth. And since Ashtoreth worship involved what? We've seen this before. They were Sodomites. Remember the days of Rehoboam? Sodomites are attached to the worship of Ashtoreth when um, Solomon married that woman from the children of the Ammonites. It always involved sexuality, fertility rights, temple prostitution. The, res- the resulting kind of worship will be depraving to the mind and would naturally be one of a sexual nature. So clearly the idea of Queen of Heaven as seen as the mother of God or something is not a Christian thing. It has never been. And today it is still practiced in the form of Virgin Mary worship of which that is not Mary. That is not Mary by any means. And when they say Virgin Mary, the Bible doesn't say Mary remained a virgin. She was married to a man called Joseph and Joseph was her husband. She wasn't, as they say, virgin. Only when she gave birth to Jesus, after that, she had a husband. So there is no queen of heaven. There has never been a queen of heaven. There is most certainly a God and a king of heaven. The Lord of hosts is his name, and he is the one alone that rules in heaven. He doesn't rule with any queen. 
he does not share his throne with anyone and his authority too and this idea that mary the mother of jesus is the queen of heaven cannot be found anywhere to be substantiated in the scriptures and it is this practice that the lord spoke through jeremiah to condemn in the life of the children of judah and today he is still speaking to us condemning the same practice when we look at the bible even angels refuse to be worshipped in revelation 19 verse 10 and and revelation 22 verse 9 when it was that john almost worshipped an angel and they will always tell him worship god that is the only person we are to worship, reverence, or venerate. And any human being is never to receive worship except the divine God himself. So, this idea of baking cakes to the Queen of Heaven, which is done today in the form of Easter, is one of the things that Jeremiah condemned. Jesus himself talked about this matter. When someone wanted to exalt Mary, when you look at the book of Luke 11 verse 27, somebody said, Blessed is the mother who gave birth to you and nursed you. And Jesus replied immediately, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. By doing this, what was Jesus doing? He was curtailing that tendency to elevate Mary as an object of worship. Because somebody was trying to say, Oh, blessed is Mary. He said, No, blessed are those that do the will of God. It's not blessed is Mary because she gave birth to me. Jesus rebuked it and corrected it immediately. He could certainly have said, Oh, yes, blessed is Mary, and also blessed are those that do the will of God. He didn't say yes. He condemned it. He rebuked it. He was affirming that truth that we are saying and stopping the tendency for us to come to the state that many are into today, worshipping so called Queen of Heaven. Now, this Queen of Heaven matter was part of the things that uh, was a problem in. In Jerusalem at the time that King Ahaz brought you know that the foolish king we mentioned earlier it was part of the foolishness of Israel at this time Israel had enough evidences on which to place their faith in God on but they would not listen why did they turn away from God believing that they needed to change their beliefs and practices in order to succeed or in order to have fertility for example it's because Satan led them astray that they could not be brought back anymore so today the lord would want us to consider are you saying like the children of judah oh this is old school instruction the lord is pointing us to the Rechabites, who followed the instruction of their father which in their time made them singular made them different made them odd had no seed no land no field no vineyard no house and yet they kept that instruction Brothers and sisters, it is a rebuke to us who feel that the instruction of the Lord is extreme. The Lord blessed the Rechabites and he will bless those who obey his word today as we live in a wicked and crooked generation. Do not compare yourself with the present generation and say, oh no, I can't be different from them. Follow the instruction of the Lord. It is not extreme. It is not even close to what these uh, Rechabites were following. The Lord hasn't said you shouldn't build houses or that you shouldn't own land, or that you shouldn't own a vineyard, or a field, or have a seed. God has allowed you to do this and much more. But the Rechabites were restricted from this. Yet they obeyed cheerfully, even in secret, when they were told to drink wine. They did not. Even in the extremity, when the Chaldeans and the Babylonians came to take over the land, they did not say, oh, it's so extreme now. There's no food. We need to drink the wine. Oh, things have gone too extreme. We need to own a land. We need to have a house. They didn't change their beliefs. Even in the extremity of the situation they were facing. We can be like the Rechabites. And the Lord bless the Rechabites and will bless all those today who follow his instructions. However odd it makes them look. However extreme it seems in the mind of others because the Rechabites did not see it as extreme. If you really trust God and you love him, and you know he loves you, you will not see his instructions as extreme. Why were the Rechabites able to follow Jonadab's instruction? They trusted Jonadab. They believed Jonadab. They knew that Jonadab told them those things in love. They knew that Jonadab saw something that they could not see. They knew that Jonadab could not be wrong. They trusted him and they followed his instructions. Even they themselves said it why they followed 
Jonadab. They responded in Jeremiah 35 verse 7 that Jonadab said, Neither shall you build house, nor sow seed, nor plant vineyard, nor have any, but all your days you shall dwell in tents. Why? That you may live many days in the land where you be strangers. Amen. They trusted that if they do what Jonadab said, they will live many days. If these men could trust a mere man, Jonadab, what then for us? Can we not trust God and follow his instructions, no matter how extreme they sound? And they are not extreme. They are good and they are for our own good. The Lord gives it to us in love. Will you not trust him? Trust his love. Trust his wisdom. The Rechabites trusted Jonadab's wisdom that the instruction that Jonadab gave to them was wise. We can trust God's love. Are you doubting that God loves you when he tells you to follow dress reform? That as a man you shouldn't dress like a woman and as a woman you shouldn't dress like a man? And if you want more instruction on that, by the way, you can uh, check your Bible on that very clearly. Daniel 3 verse 21 and you see that for those who think that there was nothing like trousers in the, in the days of the Jews, there was. Daniel 3 verse 21, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were wearing trousers. God was always in clear about the distinction between the dress of men and the dress of women. This study, is, this, this devotion is not for that, but I'm dropping that so that you can go and make a study on it, deeper study on it. And not just in the matter of dress, in the matter of diet, in the matter of the law of God in general. Does it make you look odd? But it is good for you. Trust God. Trust his love and trust his wisdom. And the Lord will bless you as he blessed the Rechabites. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for bringing to our minds the story of the Rechabites. And I pray that as we go through it, we shall be filled with the same spirit that was in these Rechabites. That we shall also be motivated like they were and be inspired like them to follow your law. Forgive us, Lord, for following the words of men more than we follow your law and your word. Help us, Lord, that our love for you will increase and our trust for you will also increase. You have given us enough evidence as to why we should love you and why we should trust you. I pray, Lord, that we shall not fail in doing this and that we shall show our love and our trust for you by listening to your instructions and doing them. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.